Well, I, I got stuck doing a lot of little things today, but um, I did print out this tray for the soundboards, and I started to mock up. I got a new uh, perf board cut out much larger, and I started to mock up where the components go and um, show you the side-by-side, -side, uh, the old one, the new one, and how this is going to look. And um, I also uh, put it on here to get a look at it how that's going to work. I put a screw in it so it stays on and everything, but that board's going to get replaced, I'm pretty sure. I'll turn some lights off because it's been running late as usual. And then I thought I'd come over here and show you. I'm, I'm finalizing my adapters. This is the last adapter I think I need for the uh, fitting the 3D smoke to a vintage chassis. Here I have a vintage chassis, and this this piece will go in there like that, and then our plastic smoke will sit up here like this, and that's how that's going to fit inside. There it is on the on the old Royal Blue, the um, reverse emboiler, where you take all that stuff off and you put on this adapter. If you have a smoke unit with a gear and all that, then we can still put it on. We put it on this way. Uh, this is Atlantic. There's a there's a Pacific that would have it as well, so it would use this arrangement. So we can do that. We can also take the vintage smoke, and we can put our um, our smart smoke lid on top of the vintage smoke and hook that in. These all have the fields because they just they work. <laughs> I can tell you, got them on everything. They work. And um, I learned something the other day. This almost fits. I would have to whack off the um, chuff sound sensor trigger. Or cut that down. I could, I could cut that down. It would still fit. But then there's a motor sticking out. So I'd have to do some more cutting. I don't know. Um, but it might lose the chuff sound but it would still have everything else. I don't know if that's worth it, if anybody wants that. Uh, but definitely it works on the, um, the full-size Pacifics, you see that. So that's what I've been doing, fitting uh, these parts properly, getting the dimensions accurate, test fitting them, making sure we have both of these kits perfect. And um, there's what that lid, you know what this lid looks like. The other lid's longer and has holes in it and stuff like that. And I did make another speaker, but it's a little big. I had to do some modifications. I may or may not have time to print it. It's right here. I close, close that, come up here and say 3D print. Click on that. Come over here and say print that baby. And then I wait for a screen to pop up. I get rid of the old print. I have to turn this one around and make it go flat. I come down here and I hit place on the ground, place it on the ground, make sure everything's shut off, center and arrange it, check my processes. Yep, that's what I want. Then I can come over here and say prepare to print and print. And this has a name, it's a firebox, or a speaker box. So I'll go down to my little directory and I should have speaker box. 2410, there it is. Save it, replace it. Yes, this one's better. Bingo. Then it shows up over here. Might take a moment. There it is. And now it's printing. Oh, isn't that neat? And in a few seconds, I'll see how long it takes. This is the process I have to go through to print. You don't just print. You got to go like, eh, hurdle, hurdle, hurdle. Uh, approximate time, 37 minutes. So it'll be done after supper. And then this thing will fit. And then I can print another one of those, and um, I can start building stuff. Yes. Okay. Got to run. Later, gang. Take care of yourself. Don't breathe the air. Mm, well, breathe some, but not the bad air. Okay.